let's jump right into the list. We have uh, number 10, Fantasy Masterpieces number three, starring Silver Surfer. This is the uh, Silver Surfer 3 reprint. Yeah, I mean, this Fantasy Masterpiece run basically are reprints of uh, some some pretty big Silver Age uh, keys and early Bronze Age keys all the way down. This one in particular I like because of the whole WandaVision spec. Um, there is a Mark Jewelers insert available for this, along with a Canadian price variant that is at 95 cents. Those are super hard to find. So is the Mark Jewelers as well. Some recent sales on eBay, which were brought to my attention by one of my team members of $1,100 and 98. But when we saw the listing, it was listed incorrectly. It was uh, listed as the reprint of Silver Surfer 3, which is the first appearance of Mephisto. This is actually Fantasy Masterpieces number three, Silver Surfer. So if you're going out to buy this book, I would be aware of that. Now, on the spec value of this book, it is a, a reprint. But like I mentioned, you have the Mark Jewelers, you have the Canadian price variant. And if you can't afford the, you know, the original, I think this is the next best thing. And I can totally see investors move it down the line once that book is out of reach, which it pretty much is right now, possibly moving to this one. Mephisto is so hot right now. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And and this might be the first dabbing on a cover as well. <laughs> <laughs> number nine, Star Wars Canon of the Last Padawan, number one variant edition. Yeah, this one right here is a uh, good old qualifier variant. So as you guys know from the, the realm of 2013's uh, on up, Marvel used to put these weird ordering qualifications on these books. Uh, this Scotty Young variant that you see right here for Kane in the Last Padawan number one required that you match your orders for cover A of Kanan with your complete orders of Princess Leia number one. And as we know, Leia was one of the, the three launch titles, Star Wars, Leia, and Darth Vader, when Star Wars did return in 2015, making that number a little bit tougher to hit. So the, the, the Scotty Young, probably not as plentiful as people might would think. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, about the the book, the title, and, and what's in the guts. For a long time, CGC, well, actually, to this day, CGC still has it as, you know, uh, four four or five first appearances, inclu including uh, Ezra Bridger, uh, Sabine Wren, Hera, Kaden Jarvis. I'm, I, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. I'm new to Star Wars, but I am not new to this book. I've had this book uh, for a very long time. And then recently, the market shifted to Kane in the Last Padawan number six as the first full appearances of these same characters, it, uh, including uh, Sabine Wren, the uh, Mandalorian uh, warrior. Um, now, uh, a lot of people know this book as the first cameo and first cover appearances. So I thought that was really interesting, too, as well. Number eight, Something Killing the Children, number one, Mr. Yi. Yeah, so this is not the first print A cover. This is actually the local comic shop day, which is, I guess, the technically foil. The, the foil. And yeah. it's also the seventh print for for issue one. I think it was Andy's pick. It's still like in the four to ten dollar range, like depending on where you can find it and buy it. Foils are really hard, really tough to get in nine eights. Uh, but what I thought was kind of interesting for this book was that instead of like, uh, shops having limited numbers for the local comic sh shop day. This is an open to order book. Local comic shop day this year or in 2020 was changed a little bit due to the pandemic. They didn't really like put a lot of the restrictions that they previously did, but they still did have some limited production books from my recollection. A lot of opportunity with this book, five to $12 right now. We don't know what the retailer order numbers are as of yet. Cause the last time I checked at least my source comic run, um, the uh, projections for October high and lows were out, but not November. And I believe this came out in November. Yeah. Um, but I've talked to multiple retailers and every one of them said that the, that they ordered this book um, the most out of all the local comic shop days and they sold them all within the first week. Um, I don't know if that means a large order or not. Don't, don't take my words out of context, but uh, by case, if it's not, um, and they're still out there for five to 10 bucks. I think you should scoop these up. I mean, I've seen raw copies recently going for like $300 of this book. So yeah, great opportunity, great pick. Number seven. 
Yep. So Annihilation Conquest number six. This was my pick, and you know I like to I like to pick up what's out of favor or people have forgotten about, and this this certainly falls in the, the in that that category. Um, the Guardians of the Galaxy hol holiday special is a ways off. The the third movie is a ways off. You know everyone's thinking in terms of the MCU. They're thinking about WandaVision. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, but Ga Guardians of the Galaxy three uh, and the Holiday Special are, are are definitely not front and center. This leads to the uh, premiere issue of the Guardians of the Galaxy team, uh, their their premiere issue um, in two thousand eight that most closely resembles the MCU version. Um, so and CGC doesn't label either book. Uh, and when I say either book, this one or Guardians of the Galaxy number one, 2008, as like first new Guardians of the Galaxy or anything. So y you'll see debate, um, you know, online, especially as as the, the movies and the special grow closer. Um, certainly uh, with this book, I checked right before we went live, Annihilation Conquest has less um, copies in the census than... The Guardians of the Galaxy launch book uh, for 2008. Um, so, and it's a you know it's a great cover. Uh, you know you've got you've got Rocket on there, um, and Drax, and um, you know it, it. You know it it had its day in the sun. You know 2015, 2016. You go and look on GPA. This thing's you know at like 500 dollars and. Uh, for a 9.8 and now it's you know in the 200s and you can get a raw copy for less than 50 bucks and that's that's the attraction for me is, is a cheap buy in for something that you know there's going to be uh, at least three digits when the time comes number six all right so this is Hawkeye number two third print by uh, Matt Fraction I think there's potential that Haley Steinfeld is amongst the best casting Marvel has any done done for any character. We're going to get this show by all accounts later this year. I think it's going to be absolutely enormous. Early Kate Bishop appearances um, aren't that scarce. Her uh, Young Avengers all the way through had a pretty high print run. This issue has is where she shows up in the Fraction run, and this third print with the purple background is really tough to come by. I love this book. It's pretty tough to find out there, and uh, I think it has a long way to go. Another sort of subtle point in this book that people haven't picked up on is that this cover on Hawkeye number one for Kate's uh, first solo series it homages this cover. She's on she she sort of a uh, has uh, shooting a bow and arrow just like this on her scooter, but it's set up the exact same way. So I'm a big big fan of this book. You can find it for maybe forty bucks right now. Um, but when Kay Bishop comes, I think she's going to take the MCU by storm. This book and a lot of other ones are going to be in high demand, in my opinion. Um, easily the best cover out of the run, in my opinion. I think this is the quintessential Hawkeye cover. Uh, you have you, just the, the purple, the, the beautiful silhouette, and only by the grace of God. I, I searched for this book for... I want to say almost a year and only by the grace of God did I find it. So um, if you come across this for uh, what, what was your price? On I think it, it's going for like 40, 50 bucks online yeah. right now, something in that neighborhood. Yeah, I would. Uh, that, that seems like a good that seems like a good buy in, especially uh, for the future. Hey, listen, if, if Carter can't find this book, you know it doesn't exist, right? Let's <laughs> be perfectly honest. How about this? In a couple months, don't say we didn't yeah. tell you so. so. Yeah, this book is going to be a tough one. Number five. Marvel Superheroes, number eight from volume two. But uh, you guys might know it as Marvel Superheroes Winter Special, number eight. And um, this is your first in-guts or in-story appearance of Squirrel Girl. Um, I like this book. Not a lot of people uh, talk about this particular character. Ben talked about it last week. He had a particular book 
that is, I guess you could say, the, the, the best play or the next best play with the first appearance. Um, but with uh, Squirrel Girl, I like her. She's a fourth wall breaker. Um, you know, she's uh, she has a great, a long history with the Avengers, the the um, uh, the new Avengers, uh, the, the Great Lakes Avengers. Uh, she can communicate with squirrels. She's actually a part of the Weapons Plus program, and that is one of the reasons why I wanted to bring her up. The Weapons Plus program is probably more than likely going to be under the spotlight in coming months or possibly years and she is one of those benefactors in which you'll learn a lot about her but just just reading uh you know her stories and her titles i mean they're great this particular book is awesome because you know you have the the great wolverine and 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 rogue and storm and namor cover uh there's of course the direct edition there's the new stand edition but there's also a mark jewelers insert edition and a canadian price variant um, and high grade is very impossible to find. And the last time I checked recent sales for nine eights, these were going for between 350 and 400. Um, raws were going between 50, I'd say mid to high grade 50 to about 75, and then really high grade around $100. So right now, this book is definitely in a law. I mean, if, if you see this in a nine eight at 350, 400 dollars. I would just just surpass the the rolls and just grab those while they're that low because if this character gets developed, this book could go through the roof. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what Marvel's done, right, where they begin to introduce and develop characters through their cartoons, Squirrel Girl has been central uh, to a lot of those. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk that she um, could certainly show up in the She-Hulk show. I would not bet against that. Uh, it seems like the perfect property property to introduce a character like Squirrel Girl, um, but a unique character um, really draws in the female audience. Um, you know, I think this is a good play. Last week we did talk about Squirrel, num Squirrel Girl number one, the Art Adams variant, which um, is near and dear to my heart. Um, but if you're going for a first appearance, I would grab this one. Uh, personally, I would grab it in newsstand if you can find it. Um, but if you can't. Um, the direct is perfectly fine. Yeah, and 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 like Ben has said many times before, you know, I mean, this isn't the greatest first appearance because she's not, you know, fully in, in, in you know, on the cover or what have you, but it's still a great cover. And like what Ben was saying is, is that uh, last week is, is that a lot of times you you look at first appearances, you want to buy them in sets. So the book that um, Ben is talking about, Squirrel Girl One, the Art Adams uh, cover. Also, with this book would be a great set to put together, you know, get them graded 9-8, you know, and then once the, she gets developed, boom, you know, you'll be proud. Yeah, I think that's a smart play, Richie. Cool. Perfect. Uh, and number four. Shuri number one, the action figure variant. Listen, anybody who knows the books that I like to track down are the ones that are tough to find. By the numbers, this book shouldn't exist. And what do I mean by that? So um, this book was a qualifier variant. Ultra touched on those earlier. In order to be able to purchase this book, you need to be able, you had to buy 200% of what you bought of Black Panther number three. Okay, what does that mean? Well, Black Panther number three, retailers ordered about 35,000 copies of that book, right? Shuri number one had orders of 34,000. So on average, most retailers did not qualify to be able to buy this book. We all know that Shuri's a mass, gonna be a massive character in the MCU going forward with the Wakanda series coming out. She's certain to be central to that. This book is generally a ghost. I've hunted it. It's tough to, it's, it's tough to come by at a fair price. I think this thing is going to hit um, prices that we can't even imagine just given the scarcity of it. But um, for me, uh, I think this book is an absolutely home run. That said, I like to sort of chase and track down books that are, are you know, relatively relatively limited and on the market, and this one fits the bill. Hey, Ben, what's the reasonable buy-in to you? I mean, I bought, so we've seen them out there currently for about 30 bucks. I, honestly, I think you're gonna look at 30 bucks and say, why the hell didn't I buy that for 30 bucks? You know, I'm cheap like you. I was trying to find him in the in the sort of the twenty dollar range, but I think at thirty, you're going to look back on this book and say, "Why the hell didn't I buy it?" 
Yeah. So I, I read this um, book. It, it, it had been probably a month or so. One thing I had for, forgot about it um, is that it, do, it does have first uh, appearances. Um, it has the first appearance of the elephant's trunk, which is um, a group of Wakandan women uh, who meet when Wakanda is in trouble. So it's the first meeting of that group and also um, the first uh, appearance of uh, a lot of members uh, of that group. So with um, the talk about a Wakanda uh, series and Black Panther 2 coming up, uh, that could also bring uh, more uh, more heat uh, within uh, th within the innards uh, of the book um, uh, to bear. Number three, Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer's Supreme. Number one, uh, the action figure variant. We have another action figure variant. Um, does anybody remember over the summer when? Um, just Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme became, it came out of nowhere to become um, a hot book, uh, particularly the first print, the second print, and the one in 25 variant. Those three were the standouts, and uh, mainly because it was the first appearance of Nina the Conjurer. There's a, there was a lot, there's a little bit of, a little bit of hype surrounding this character, and, and, Oddly enough, the 1 in 25 was the main book because she was on the cover and she's kind of in the background. You know, if you, on first glance, you really don't catch her. She's kind of, she's kind of hidden. Yep. But this one, this version, this version of number one, it's her first appearance and she's solely on the cover. She is smack dab square on the cover. I like this book a lot. I remember uh, coming across this book um, over the summer, over that summertime period, and just going, wow, how is this book not worth anything? You know yeah. what I mean? It's because so, it's not known. Exactly. This, this and the hip hop variant, my friend. Let me tell you. Uh huh. These, these qualifier variants on on these key books, man. When people start going crazy over the first print and the the one, you know, whatever incentives are out there, these are usually forgotten about, mm -hmm. and they're not remembered until they're discovered later by some people going very <laughs> deeply diving into either a long box or yeah. into, into a previous book and, and going, oh my God, these exist. Yeah, so, exactly. Great find, man. I think it's definitely got a book. This is a book with a, with an upside. These action figure variants had huge uh, retailer fatigue on them. They mm -hmm. weren't flying off the shelves. So a lot of, the, even, even when they qualified, they didn't order very many of them because they weren't moving. So yeah. these are gems. Like oh, there's a lot of these out there that are really, really smart pickups. Yeah, what we're noticing is that these action figure variants, they're particularly good to female characters. Uh, Riri mm -hmm. uh, and uh, America Shopping in particular. Yeah, and Gwenpool. They're, they're very good to the female characters, and this, this book here should be no different. Number two. Star Wars Adventures number seven. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Christopher Rentrum for giving me uh, this under um, on my radar. Uh, so here you have the first appearance of Hondo uh, Naka, and you within the story uh, you also have a <clears throat> rebel story that's not uh, like a flashback of the memories like compared to like uh, Canon number one, and then it's also an IDW series so. Uh, so you'll find them in the in like the children's section. So I think Nico would be probably this pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and, and these IDW, all, these IDW books. I, I've been actually collecting a lot of them from Star Wars to Marvel action and what have you. Don't sleep on these IDW books because they're great, especially the Star Wars Adventures books, including Star Wars High Republic Adventures, and down the line, long term. It's very spec worthy because once they dry up, they're going to be very hard to find. Just not a lot of them out there. Yeah. And would it surprise anyone if we see Hondo in Mandalorian, maybe? I mean, we saw the pirates like in one of the yeah. later episodes. Totally. Totally see it. Uh, also, for uh, the people out there, there's a B cover, a variant B cover that's uh, out there just circulating too. That, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's also a retailer's incentive, uh, one in ten. So I can't imagine there being a lot out there, because uh, you know, not a lot of people ordering ten copies of it. Yeah. 
IDW. Now our number one book this week. Young Avengers number one. The O'Malley second print. Uh, what we have here is a situation again with a qualifier variant. And it was, you know, 100% of another book in order to just be able to order the ability, unlock the ordering ability for even this variant, even though the, you know, the, the O'Malley color variant also had a qualifier. So uh, all, it, all sorts of craziness going on with the Young Avengers. But, of course, we have America Chavez. We've got Wiccan. Uh, we've got Speed. Uh, we've got Kate Bishop. And we've got Kid Loki. And, of course, Hulkling. Uh, so this lineup right here, it's looking more and more like this is going to be our MCU lineup. And if that is the case, you can expect the Young Avengers to have a major market correction once that groundwork is established. But I I'm still seeing this is also something else that people... Th the reason why I put it on the list is because the color version and this version is actually America Chavez's first variant cover. And there's a third book in this mix, Ultra, which we've talked about, right? So there's there's the O'Malley um, color. This is the second print. And the Scotty Young, which was under the same qualifier, um, which America is also on, which you should consider when you, if you're looking at these books. But, yeah, this team is going to be closer to the team that I think we see for Young Avengers. You know, that said, we've talked in the past that we may see uh, Riri show up in that team. I don't think she was in involved in this particular team. But, um, but this second printing, really stunning. America Chavez, front and center. She's going to be a huge character in MCU.